Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Is everybody doing today? Good. good. Hey, great. Y'all have a good week? I did. Great, great. Let's go to prayer. Let's open up. Holy Father, we ask that your word be heard. That you remove self. Lord, we ask that you continue to grow us, expand our minds, increase our knowledge, improve our understanding. We ask that your spirit be here with us and that your holy angels surround us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, can I share some thoughts? Yes. I've been uh, contemplating a few things, and one of them is Sabbath. How lightly we regard Sabbath. You know, all of us are guilty of lightly regarding Sabbath. You know, this is the time that the Lord wants us to draw near to Him, to come close to Him. And one of the things that really occurred to me last night and this morning is that I'm constantly letting my thoughts go other places. This is a time for you and God. Time for, and I'm going to talk about a personal conviction, okay? Okay. This is a time for me and God. And what I realized this morning, what I was led to realize, is that, that it's also, you know, rest. What do you get from rest? Time. Well, you're tired before you rest, right? Right. So, but you get strength from your rest. Recharge. Recharge. And what I begin to realize is that if I could train my mind to stay on heavenly thoughts during the Sabbath time, then I am learning temperance for when trials throughout the week come and hit me. In other words, you are strengthening because I'm constantly going here, constantly going there, and I'm not talking with the Lord. I need to be spending time with the Lord. I need to let my thoughts be of heavenly things. I need to let my thoughts be of godly things and spend time with God. That's a personal relationship right there. And the Sabbath time is set aside. The seventh day of the week is for that purpose. It's exactly. Now, so many things. We're going to be talking. This series that we have been studying is uh, how heavy are, are our chains and what must I do to be saved, right? So we said that we hear, we believe, we repent, we confess, we are baptized. Five things. I'm not going to go back and recap all this again. But so then we talked last week on the altar of sacrifice. Some of you were here. And, and if you missed it, go back to the YouTube channel. Is it in YouTube already? It's in YouTube, Altar of Sacrifice, which is the altar of the cross. You know, and it is self-denial. Self-denial is what we covered last week. Denying self. Well, this week I want to talk about overcoming. Do we have work to do? Yes. Yes. Do you know you can't have the law without the gospel? When you can't have the gospel without the law, the, the gospel, the law is the root of that the gospel, the gospel is the bloom and the blossom of. Uh, I'll word it a little differently. Uh, the, the law is the embodiment of the gospel, and the gospel is the unfolding of the law. Okay. So these are just some deep thoughts that I've had this week that I've been studying on. As we study the Word, we draw closer to God, we begin to see ourselves. I begin to see me. And where my faults are. And where I'm lagging and, and suffering. And we are to seek what? Righteousness. Righteousness unto holiness. Righteousness unto holiness. Our scripture reading. But seek you first the kingdom of God. It was Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. There's a promise. There's a condition, and here's a promise. Jesus is speaking. What is the condition and the promise? Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things 
shall be added unto you. Is anybody curious about what things are going to be added unto you? That's the promise, right? We see the condition. The condition is this. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Let's look at what's going to be added to us. Let's go back to Matthew 6, 33. And we're going to back up a little bit to 31. Verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or, what shall we drink? Or, wherewithal shall we be clothed? How many times, and I'm going to ask you all a question. How many times have we been worried about everything in our life? Everything. And instead of seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness, we're too worried about how we're going to make our next dollar. Or where we're, next money is going to come from. Or, or maybe our groceries are getting a little low and we begin to stress over where is our next meal coming from. Do y'all see the promise and the conditions here that God is saying? He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of these things shall... Do y'all want to know something? I've never been without. Ever since I've been seeking God and His righteousness, I have not been without. God has blessed me. I haven't had everything that I wanted. But I've had everything that I needed. I've never done without a meal. I've had clothes. As a matter of fact, I wrestled with God one time. The Holy Spirit had convicted my heart. Way, I, I can't remember how many years ago this was now. I think it was in 2012 or 2011. I listened to a preacher preach and he was way off mark in the church and it just bug, bugged me so bad. And the Holy Spirit pressed upon my heart, you should be preaching. And I began to wrestle with the Lord all the way home. I drove home and I made a hundred excuses. Lord, you know I don't have no decent clothes. I said, Lord, you know I have no suits and no ties. I'm an old construction worker. I wasn't a rich man. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have... I said, Lord, I don't have dress shoes. I don't have dress socks. I said, I don't... I, and the drive from the church to my house was 30 minutes plus. And I wrestled with the Lord all the way home. I said, Lord, I don't have no decent suits. I don't have anything. How can I preach? And I got home and I was still wrestling with the Lord. And I walked in, I started making myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the counter. And I'm spreading this stuff out, still telling the Lord all the reasons why I couldn't preach. And all of a sudden I heard this on my front door. And I went to my front door, and lo and behold, here was my neighbor who was just widow widowed one year earlier. She lost her husband. And she had a whole armload of suits in her arms. And she looks up right at me and she says, you know I was standing in my closet a little while ago and I was looking at all these suits that belonged to my husband. And she said, your name come to my mind and I wanted you to have them. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I reached out and I took the suits and I thanked her for them. And I shut the door and I laid the suits over the arm of the couch and I said, Lord, they probably don't even fit me. And I tried them on, and lo and behold, guess what? They fit. I love this right here. God's promises are His promises. If He says it, believe it. I can't tell you how many times things like that has happened in my life. He wants a relationship. He wants to hear you speak to Him audibly. Talk to Him. He's there. He hears. He hears you. Confession is made with the mouth unto salvation. With thy speech you will be justified. These are verses in the Bible. But I want to go back to here. But seek you first the kingdom of heaven and his, the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Does God want to cooperate with us? Yes. He wants us to cooperate with Him. Yes. 
Absolutely. He sure does. I want to read an opening. First of all, I forgot to welcome our uh, internet church family. Hello, church family. Love, love you all. Glad to have you here. We should always remember we have a we have a broader church than just what is sitting right here, and they join us every Sabbath, and we love them, Amen. and we want to include them every week. Opening statement, and what a blessing God has blessed us with to be able to reach out to all over the world. I want to read an opening statement. What are we doing? Those that profess to be Christians, what are you doing? Are you talking of the power of Christ? Or are you talking of the hellish shadow of Satan? Are you telling how difficult it is for you to overcome the world, the flesh, and, and the devil? Do we talk about how difficult that is? Is that the way you are talking? Well, Christ presents to us a different story. If He has given us a new heart, if He has shown us the exceeding riches of His glory, if He has put a new song in our mouths, out of the treasures of our heart will we bring forth praise and thankfulness and honor to our God and our Savior. And our, that's the Father and the Son. And our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, the Father is asking, if I am a father, y'all can look it up in the Bible. If I am a father, where is my honor? God is saying it. He says, if I am a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? It's in the Bible. Remember me teaching in the series that the schoolmaster was the commandments and the commandments was the very character of God. It's broad. Way beyond just the letter of the law when you study it. Do y'all love the promises He promises us? What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we be clothed with? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. I did a genealogy a while back and I, I found out something I didn't know. And when I found out, I ran into the other room and I told my wife, I said, I'm a Gentile, baby. I'm glad Christ came for us, too. <laughs> I have very little Jewish blood in me. But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I want to I want to tell y'all. Let's go to the promises of being an overcomer. Y'all y'all like reading the promises? I'd rather read the promises first and then look at the conditions. How about y'all? Y'all with me on this? Let's go to Revelation chapter two. Let's look at what Jesus is saying through His messenger. Revelation chapter two, and we're going to go to verse seven. I'm going to read some promises with you, okay? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the... Who's speaking? Spirit. Is that a capital S? Yes. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, who is he going to give to the tree? Who is He going to give to be able to eat of the tree of life in the midst of the paradise? Mm -hmm. those so to those who what? Overcome. Overcome. Overcome what? Do we have a work to do? Yes. We do. We do. Let's go to another promise. I love this promise. Who, how many of y'all want to eat of that tree of life? Amen. 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 I want to be there. I want to eat of it. Let's go to verse 211. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, Spirit saith unto the churches, He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Is there going to be a second death? Yes. So the promise here is you will not be hurt. So now we get to eat of the tree of life in the midst of the paradise of God and we're not going to be hurt by the second death if we do what? Overcome. 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 Is y'all's curiosity getting aroused already about what this means to overcome? Let's go to another promise. 
chapter 2, verse 17. Just a few verses down. Let's just read the promises. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth except he that receiveth it. Do you all like that promise? I do. A new heart, a new name. Mm, I love it. But what do you have to do to get this? Overcome. You have to overcome something. What is that? We're going to read about this today. We have a work to do in ourselves also. And that's exactly what I was talking about, about the Sabbath also. We don't need to lightly regard God's conditions. Right? Think about that. So many people are doing it. And I'm guilty of it also. Uh, chapter 2, verse 26. Let's go to verse 26 here. And he that overcometh and keepeth my what? So now there's two conditions. You have to overcome and you have to keep his works. Who is the Spirit? Of God. Spirit of Christ speaking to us, right? Yeah. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. Interesting. Interesting. The second death isn't going to hurt you. In that final judgment. Let's go to chapter 3, verse 5. Chapter 3, verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. How many of y'all want to wear white raiment? Amen. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. I want my name written in that book. I just had recently had my name removed from another book. This book here is the one I want my name in. Amen. Right here. In the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Yes. He that hath an ear, let him hear. But the Spirit saith to the churches. There it is again. Alright, let's go to verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he, who is speaking here? In the temple of whose God? Isn't this the Spirit speaking? Yep. I'm asking you, is this the Spirit speaking? Yes. Yes, it is. Now listen to the Spirit's word. The Spirit of who? Christ. This is the Spirit of Christ because He calls God His God. He calls His God His God several times in the Bible. I can bring those out, but that's a different sermon. Him that overcometh, and this, this is what it's saying, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Christ Christians. Christians is the name. We're going to receive the name of Christ. We're going to be found in him. He's the head of the church. Verse 13. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit. Was this the Spirit talking here? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Are these beautiful promises? Amen. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. Did Jesus come here and overcome something? Yes. And am set down with my who? Father. Father. Father in His throne. Who is this Spirit speaking, church? What? Who is this Spirit talking here? Jesus. Whose Spirit is speaking? Jesus. Jesus. This is pretty clear, isn't it? Yes. This is Jesus speaking to His Father. church, to us. This is Jesus speaking to us. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, go back to verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice 
and open the door. I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. You'll find that in Acts chapter 2 verse 33 and Hebrews chapter 1. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, capital S, saith unto the churches. I love these promises. Jesus is making some promises to y'all. To you and I. If we overcome. Overcome what? Sin. Sin. And we're going to cover it. We're going to cover it. That's great. Great answers. Sin. Sin's a good answer. But we're going to go a little bit deeper and cover that on what Jesus is okay. talking about here. Okay? Self is a good one. We gotta overcome self. We have to overcome sin. Hey, y'all, y'all are theologians. Come on, spin it on out there. We gotta overcome the world. That's right. That's all biblical. Every bit of that. I love it. This church is on fire. That's a good way to say. Verse 20, uh, chapter, let's go to last promise I want to read to you right now. Chapter 21, verse 7 of Revelation. Let's go to chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh, y'all with me? He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Beautiful promises. Beautiful promises. If I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? I want to go, you'll find there's a, there's a parable that Jesus spoke in the Bible. It's called the parable of the seed sower. The parable of the seed sower. I want to cover some of this of what he's talking about overcoming now. Okay? Okay. We've read the promises. Let's look at the conditions a little bit deeper. Let's look at those conditions. You'll find the parable of the seed sower in two locations, Matthew 13, 1 through 23. Jot it down. But we're not going to read from there. We're going to go to Luke chapter 8, okay? Luke chapter 8, verse 5. A sower went out to sow his a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. They swooped down and take it up. And some of the seed fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked what? Moisture. Well, what's the Holy Spirit compared to? The latter, Rain. the first, Rain. and the latter. Rain. It lacked what? Moisture. It lacked moisture. It had no understanding. And no root in itself. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up, and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear. Oops, does that sound familiar? Didn't we just read, He that hath ears to hear in all of those promises in the book of Revelation? And then Jesus is saying the same words right here. Interesting. He that hath ears to hear. Jesus was on the earth. He was in the flesh. Let him hear. Jesus spoke it from his own mouth. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Of the what? Kingdom of Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Can y'all see all this tying together already? Mm -hmm. This tying together very nicely. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. And he said, Unto you it was given, it is given, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they may not understand. Very interesting. And I'll explain that more later. Verse 11. 
Now the parable is this. The seed is the Word of God. So what is this seed? The Word of God. It is the Word of God. Those by the wayside are they. See, Jesus is going to tell us right now what this parable is. Verse 12, Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. So that that fell by the wayside, remember the fowls swooped down and took it up. And right here, Jesus is telling us in His own words, this is the devil in His dominion. Swooping down to take up those seeds. And what are those seeds? The Word of God. The Word of God. Verse 13. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the Word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe. And in time of what? In time of temptation, they fall away. So, there's another one. The second one. So he's talking about the wayside, the rock, and then the thorns and thistles. Let's look at that. Verse 14. And they which fell among the thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. There's three things happening here. The first one is Satan and his dominion swooping down to take the Word of God away from you. The second one is the seed fell upon a rock. You know what that rock is? That's an unfallowed ground of heart. Unfallowed ground of heart. It's not been plowed. It's not cultivated. Our hearts are stony. It's not been changed. As you see where I'm going with this? It's self. So you have Satan. You have self. Let's look at the last one. Verse 14. And then there was thorns and thistles. The seed fell among the thorns and thistles, and the Bible tells us these thorns and thistles are the cares, concerns, riches, and pleasures. Cares, concerns, riches, and pleasures of this life. And what do all these things? No, oh, you know what? That's why Jesus said how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because he's traded paradise for a vacation. Here. So what happens is these cares of this life become as thorns and thistles and they begin to choke out the Word of God because the person is not seeking first the kingdom, the kingdom of God. So now we have Satan, we have self, and we have the world. The cares, which is the world. The world, Satan, and self. So what three things do I need to overcome in my life? The world, Satan, and myself. Remember, we study this. By the way, I have a sermon out called Undoing a Curse on YouTube. Undoing a Curse. It's where Christ goes back into the wilderness and He meets the foe with three great temptations that Eve fell at and He conquers the foe in the wilderness. Go on YouTube, look up Undoing a Curse. You'll find it. Part 1 and Part 2, I think. Alright, so that, I'm not going to go into great detail, but that's overcoming self. And that is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And Satan attacks us through our intellect, through our, through our will, and through our imagination. Imagination being the back door into our minds. All of this is covered in those sermons on YouTube. Y'all go back and catch it and look it up. <clears throat> I'm not, it's too much for me to cover here today right now. <coughs> so that's just dealing with self. But then we have to deal with Satan. Satan don't allow all them seeds to produce. Him and his enemy are there to swoop them away from you. Take them away. You know, when you go out and you... And then what about the rock? When the sun rises, the, the plant withers away because it had no root in itself. That root is understanding. Every time we open up the Word of God, we should always pray that He grants us understanding. It's by His Holy Spirit that we're able to understand these parables. <coughs> And Jesus spoke plain here. Let's go on to verse 15. By the way, do y'all see the three things we have to overcome? Yes. So all those promises where it says, if you overcome. Do you have a work to do to cooperate with Christ in your own lives? Yeah, we do. 
We can't. We're not saved by our works, but we're going to be rewarded according as our work has been. You'll find that in Revelation chapter 22. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work has been. Is what Jesus says, what the Spirit says to the churches. <clears throat> so verse 15, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, in an honest and what? Good heart. That heart is cultivated. Plowed. There's a work happening here. The circumcision of the heart. The evidence. Having heard the word, keep it. They have what? Heard the word. It landed in the thallow ground of the what? Heart. The word landed in your heart and you kept it. Beautiful, isn't it? This is the one that overcomes. He's telling you how you overcome these three things. The Word of God's got to be in your heart. And it will bring forth fruit with what? Patience. Bring forth fruit with what? Patience. patience. With patience. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, cover it with a vessel, and put it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter, that they which enter in may see the light. <coughs> so, what three things do we need to overcome? Well, so, I go up to a tree, and I look at this tree. How many of y'all like fruit trees? I do. All right. I thought I planted an apple tree. But when I walk out to my tree, something orange is growing on it. And I wanted an apple tree. But I ended up with an orange tree. So, I still want my apple tree. I was tricked. So I pull all those oranges off that tree, and I say, be an apple tree. It's going to grow apples next year, right? It's not going to grow apples, is it? No, it's not going to grow apples. Why not? Because it's still a what? <laughs> That's what Christ in your heart does for you. He changes us. you got to go to the root. We can't treat the symptoms. We can't treat the symptoms of our sin. We can't go out and try to polish ourselves up and try to explain something. We've got to overcome these things. But if it's not, if Christ is not in your heart to begin with, guess what you're not going to do? You're not going to change. It's a relationship with the Lord. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that the world through Him might be saved. That the world through Him might be saved. Matthew 4, 1. I'm sorry, don't go there. That's the temptations. We'll jot this down. I said there's two places in the Bible. There are two places in the Bible that cover the temptations in the wilderness. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 31, and Luke 4, 1 through 11. And you'll find, you want to go on YouTube. If you're looking for me on YouTube, the best way to find our sermons on YouTube, for all those viewing, to look up these sermons, you can type in. Uh, they can type obtaining in word like ministry. Yeah. So we have. I'm doing a curse is one of those sermons and the altar of sacrifice is the other. And there's two and one being under the uh, How Heavy Are You Chains series. Turn with me to James 4, 1 through 10. James 4, 1 through 10. From whence come wars and fightings among you? From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your what? Lust. 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 Remember what I said on self? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Even of your lust that war in your members, ye lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have. You cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask what? Amiss. Amiss. That you may consume it upon your lusts. 
Is this a person that's overcome self? No. No. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world, is that the other thing we've got to overcome? Yes. There's self in the world, is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of who? God. Hmm. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But He giveth more grace. Wherefore He saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves before, therefore to God. Resist the devil. Now, did James already mention all three things here that we got to overcome? Yes. Yeah. He's already covered all three of these things that Jesus spoke about, didn't He? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Is that a beautiful promise? Amen. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Cleanliness. Y'all heard that. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah, somebody saying, well, that's not in the Bible. Those words, word for word, isn't there like that. But I just read it right here, didn't I? Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Your works represent your works. What you are doing. And purify your hearts. Now, did James just mention how we can overcome? Yes, he is. He's mentioning it right here. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. We can't walk the fence, can we? No. We can't serve two masters. You'll hate one and love the other. That's right. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. It means to humble yourselves. Verse 10, he even says it. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. He will lift us up. Overcoming self. Overcoming. James just covers all three of these things that we had to overcome. And then he even goes further and he tells us how to overcome these things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, self. Second one, overcome the world. Third one, overcome the Satan. It says, flee to God. Draw near to Him and He'll draw near to us. And Satan will flee from you. You know, when old Satan's attacking, just start singing hymnals. Praise God. When the, when the portals of heaven are open and God hears your musical hymnals, and, and trust me, I can't, I'm not the best singer in the world. But it must be beautiful to God because I know He loves me. <laughs> and He forgives me for my errors. <laughs> so, even if we can't sing, Beautifully, even if your words are perfect in speech, Christ mingles His own with it before the Heavenly Father. He mingles it with it. Y'all can jot these down. He who overcomes the world, 1 John 5, 1 through 5. Who overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is in fact the Son of the living God. That's the testimony that's being buried there. That's the record being buried in heaven, the testimony being buried in one person. The whole testimony and the whole record that everyone agrees to in heaven and on earth in one is the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Well, that's how you overcome the world. That's the first steps. Accepting Christ as your personal Savior. Overcoming the wicked one. 1 John 2, 13. Let's go there. About to wrap this up. I write unto you, fathers, <clears throat> because you have known Him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known Him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, 
and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome who? The wicked, the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Who is the prince of this world? Satan. 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 So now John is talking about overcoming the wicked one, Satan. And now he's talking about overcoming Satan's kingdom. Also, this world. This is not my kingdom. I'm a sojourner. How many of y'all can say that? Amen. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, verse 15, <clears throat> If any man love the world, the love of the Father is God. God. If you love this world, the love of the Father is not in you. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Didn't I say that was self? Yes. It is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, God. and he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. Are y'all seeing a pattern here? Yeah. And what these apostles are teaching, and what Jesus spoke, and what John wrote on the island of Patmos. Y'all see the pattern, pattern all coming together? Very beautiful. Are we children of God? Yes. We're children of Satan. There's only two choices. Turn with me to John 8, 42. Jesus said, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Did He proceed forth and come from God? Yes. Neither came I of myself, but He sent me. Did God send Christ to this earth? Yes, yes He did. By the way, you can go to Proverbs chapter 8 and read how Christ proceeded forth from the Father in the Old Testament. Why do you not understand my speech? He's talking to the Pharisees and the, and the hypocrites. I mean the, the scribes, uh, the uh, Sadducees. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, you are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father... You will do. What's the lust of the Father? Their Father. God. What's the lust? That's, what's the lust of their Father? Lust of the flesh. Pride. pride of life. Lust of the eyes. That's the prince of this world. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Very cunning, wicked one. He abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Let me ask you all a question. Which one of them stood up and convinced Jesus he had sin in his life? God. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. How many people? Zero. Zero. That's what he said. Jesus asked. How many of y'all are going to convince me of sin? Try. He had no sin in them. They couldn't even prove it. As a matter of fact, when they crucified him, they had to bear false witness against him to do it. They had to bear false witness. Verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Can the word, can this world hear God's words? The worldliness. No. The worldliness. No. no the, world, the world will not hear it. They reject it. Are there characters fitting them to go into heaven? No. No? They're not even trying to develop characters to fit them for the kingdom of heaven, are they? No. Break up the fallow ground of your hearts. Break up the fallow ground of our hearts. Soften them. Let Christ come in. Sow to ourselves in righteousness. And reap mercy. You'll find that in Jeremiah 4, verse 3. 
This work he desires to accomplish for us. And also you'll find that in Hosea 10, verse 12. This work he desires to accomplish for us, and he asks us to cooperate with him. Do we have a work to do also? Yes. We have a work to do. We have to cooperate with Christ. We're not saved through our works. We're saved through faith by grace. By grace. But we are going to be judged according to this word. And the Bible tells me that man is justified by his words. God hears every word we speak. Whether they be in idleness, in private, in secret. There's not a single thing that's not getting jotted down by those angels. Amen. Purify your hearts. Circumcise your hearts. What you're able to cast away, what you're not able to have any control over, where Satan's got you in the deepest control, turn it over to Christ. And He'll bring you out of it. Give it to Him. Let's go to prayer. All right. Holy Father, I ask that You continue to train us and to guide us, to teach us the ways of Your beautiful Son. He came here as our perfect example. As our perfect example. He says, I am the way. Lord, keep us in the path. Jesus says, I am the truth. Lord, plant those seeds in my heart. Jesus promised, I am the life. I cling to Your promises, Lord that I have read in the book of Revelation. I want to be there. We want to be there. Let your angels surround us and be with us. Grant us peace, grace, and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.